Hello, this is Dr. Do again. This video is outside of medicine, continue to uh, reading and uh, view the history through reading. So I'm going to continue to read. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, stretch out your hand with your staff over the streams and canals and ponds and make frogs come up on the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the water of Egypt and the frogs came up and covered the land. But the magicians did the same things by their secret arts. They also made the frog come up on the land of Egypt. Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Pray to the Lord to take the frogs away from me and my people, and I will let your people go to offer sacrifices to the Lord. Moses said to Pharaoh, I leave to you the honor of setting the time for me to pray for you and your officials and your people that you and your houses may be rid of the frogs except for those that remain in the Nile. Tomorrow, Pharaoh said, Moses replied, it will be as you say, so that you may know there is no one like the Lord our God. The frogs will leave you and your houses, your officials and your people. They will remain only in the Nile. After Moses and Aaron left Pharaoh, Moses cried out to the Lord about the frogs he had brought on Pharaoh, and the Lord did what Moses asked. The frogs died in the houses, in the courtyard, and in the fields. They were piled into heaps, and the land reeked of them. But when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he hardened his heart and would not listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had said. The plague of nets. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, stretch out your staff and strike the dust of the ground. And throughout the land of Egypt, the dust will come, become nets. They did this, and when Aaron stretched out his hand with the staff and struck the dust of the ground, nets came upon men and animals. All the dust throughout the land of Egypt became nets. But when the magicians tried to produce nets by their secret arts, they could not. And the nets were on men and animals. The magician said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart was hard, and he would not listen, just as the Lord had said. The plague of flies. And then the Lord said to Moses, Get up early in the morning and confront Pharaoh as he goes to the water, and say to him, This is what the Lord says. Let my people go so that they may worship me. If you do not let my people go, I will send a swarm of flies on you and your officials, on your people, and into your houses. The houses of Egyptians will be full of flies, and even the ground where they are. But on that day I will deal differently with the land of Goshan, where my people live. No swarms of flies will be there, so that you will know that I, the Lord, am in this land. I will make a distinction between my people and your people. This miraculous sign will occur tomorrow. And the Lord said this, did this. Then swarms of flies poured into Pharaoh's palace and into the houses of his officials and throughout the Egypt, the land was ruined by the flies. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Go, sacrifice to your God here in the land. But Moses said, That would not be right. The sacrifice we offer the Lord our God would be detestable to the Egyptians. And if we offer sacrifices that are detestable in their eyes, will they not stone us? We must take a three-day journey into the desert to offer sacrifice to the Lord our God as he commands us. Pharaoh said, I will let you go to offer sacrifice to the Lord your God in the desert, but you must not go very far. Now pray for me. Moses answered, as soon as I leave you, I will pray to the Lord, and tomorrow the flies will leave Pharaoh and his officials and his people. Only be sure that Pharaoh does not act deceitfully again by not letting the people go to offer sacrifices to the Lord. 
Then Moses left Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord. And the Lord did what Moses asked. The flies left Pharaoh and his officials and his people. Not a fly remained, but this time also Pharaoh hardened his heart and would not let the people go. The Plague on Livestock, Chapter 9 Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, This is what the Lord, the God of Hebrews, says, Let my people go, so that they may worship me. If you refuse to let them go and continue to hold them back, the hand of the Lord will bring a terrible plague on your livestock in the field, on your horses and donkeys and the camels and on your cattle and the sheep and the goats. But the Lord will make a distinction between the livestock of Israel and that of Egypt, so that no animal belonging to the Israelites will die. The Lord set a time and said, Tomorrow the Lord will do this in the land, and... The next day the Lord did it. All the livestock of the Egyptians died. But not one animal belonging to the Israelites died. Pharaoh sent a man to investigate and found that not even one of the animals of Israelites had died. Yet his heart was unyielding and he would not let the people go. The Plague of Boils Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Take handfuls of soot from a furnace and have Moses toss it into the air in the presence of Pharaoh. It will become fine dust over the whole land of Egypt and the festering boils will break up the man and animals throughout the land. So they took soot from a furnace and stood before Pharaoh. Moses tossed it into the air, and the festering boil broke out on man and animals. The magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils they were on them and on all the Egyptians. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had said to Moses. The Plague of Hail then the Lord said to Moses, Get up early in the morning, confront Pharaoh, and say to him, This is what the Lord, the God of Hebrews, says, Let my people go so that they may worship me. For this time I will send the full force of my plagues against you and against your officials and your people, so you may know that there is no one like me in all earth. For by now I could have stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with a plague that would have wiped you off the earth, but I have raised you up for this very purpose, that I might show you my power and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. You still set yourself against my people and will not let them go. Therefore, at this time tomorrow, I will send the worst hailstorm that has ever fallen on Egypt, from the day it was founded till now. I'm going to stop here today and continue next time. Thank you for watching.